today we're going to learn how to use uh, Photoshop to produce an NRG composite image. Um, this will allow us to, an to analyze uh, vegetative health and there's a pretty good measure of photosynthesis. What you need are an infrared picture captured with a regular camera that has been modified to uh, take pictures only in the infrared range, which is just beyond the color red, just outside of what we can see as humans. Uh, and then a matching picture of the same thing from the same angle at the same time uh, uh, which we'll call the visible image because uh, we can see it. So uh, you're going to want to open these up in Photoshop and take exactly overlays what we see in the visible image. Uh, one really good way to do this is to put that top layer on the uh, multiply screen mode and or blending mode and then you can kind of see through it. Uh, you could do opacity as well. I tend to like multiply because it, it brings out all the details. Um, so I'm going to start scaling this. You can see how these little strips down here, I'm starting to line them up. And I'm going to start going around kind of in a, in a circle. Uh, get the top corner here, the next corner over, lined up, the bottom, and slowly we'll kind of converge on a good alignment. At a certain point, just resizing the image is not going to work because it's actually rotated, it's, uh, it's distorted, the camera geometry is different. So we could rotate here, but what I'm going to do is right click and choose distort, which means we can drag each of the four corners independently. And then I'm going to keep going. So now you notice when I drag this corner, it doesn't actually drag anything else, it's just that one corner, and it distorts the image to fit. We're pretty close here, but what we want to do is actually, once we get it relatively close, we want to zoom in and see how we're doing um, at a higher resolution. Uh, because usually you can't quite see whether it's good or not. So I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see, indeed, we are a little bit off. I'm going to drag this up. What I'm looking for around here, whether these things line up. Down here, we've gone out of alignment again, you can see. So I'll drag this up from the corner. And up here, we've gone quite a ways out. There we go. See how that kind of clicks? And it's looking good pretty much all the way across. So we'll say this is, this is pretty good. I'm going to press Enter, and or press Return, and that will commit the, the, um, the distortion. And then I'm just going to crop it down so that uh, we have an image which is entirely present in, in, in both layers. We can kind of... Uh, there you go. Okay, so I'll turn off the multiply. Now what you can see is that we have these images almost exactly lined up. Good enough for our purposes. And what you see is that the, in the infrared range, all this vegetation is extremely bright. That's because plants reflect a lot of infrared light away. They can't use it, and so that would just heat them up too much. And so they, they tend to be very reflective in the infrared, but they tend to be very absorbent in the visible range because they're using that light to produce food. Uh, that's how chlorophyll works. So um, let's see. What we're going to do is I'll rename these infrared source and visible source. And I'm not going to touch these. I'm going to duplicate them so that we always have those sources available. Sometimes I've in the past, uh, you know, uh, modified the sources and then I've, I've, I've lost track of what's what and uh, you know, damaged my, my data. So, so I tend to keep everything kind of separate now. All right, I'll turn those off so we don't have to be bothered by them. And what I'm going to do is desaturate this. The camera is not really designed to capture infrared data, so it, it kind of thinks it's purple in color. But we, what we really want is just a black and white image of exactly the intensities of infrared. So I've done that. And then I'm actually going to duplicate this layer, the visible image. Let me turn off the infrared for a second. And I'm going to name this red. And the one below it, I'm going to name green. Oops. Sorry. Green. OK. So what we can learn about these images, this is actually, it's not red yet. It's just a regular visible, in, uh, visible image. And if we go into channels, we'll see the different colors, red, green, and blue. So if you click on them, you can actually see just the red color. It renders it as black and white. 
just the green color and just the blue color. This is literally the data that the the camera splits color into three colors, or col splits the image into three colors, and then basically uh, it's in its blue mode it gathers all the blue light, and the green, road, green mode it gathers all the green light and the red all the red. What you notice here is that blue light is very diffused. There's a lot of clouds here, and that's because uh, shorter wavelengths, uh, such as blue light, tend to be scattered more by the atmosphere. But as you get into longer wavelengths, uh, it gets uh, it penetrates through the clouds better. So what we're going to do is um, we need to extract just the red channel here. And the way we do that is we go up to Adjustments and we go to the Channel Mixer. There's actually a preset for this. So we'll say the black and white with a red filter, meaning it takes just the red information and it renders it as a monochrome image. We'll do the same with the green data. Uh, but we'll choose a green filter. And that's just the green image. You can tell that they're actually different because if you turn them on, you get that same thing. The green ones are shorter wavelengths and they're more they're more uh, diffused. The red ones are longer and so they're they're more clear. And actually, now we can turn on our infrared. And uh, the lens is not really designed for infrared light, it, so it's it's a little it's a little bit out of focus. But in general, it's pretty good. So we now have our th we now have our three channels. What we need to do now is actually uh, display them in the wrong color. The human eye can only see red, green, and blue, so the reason I've left blue out of the equation here is because we only have space for three. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the infrared channel, and I'm going to turn off, turn off these so it's only using the red channel, so it will appear as red. It's pretty dramatic. I'll make that invisible for a moment. Do the same thing to red, but for red I'm going to use the green channel. So we're kind of swapping around our different channels here. So I turn this off, you can see that's just green. I'm going to turn that off for a moment and do the same thing with green, and we'll use our final channel, which is blue. Now what's going to happen is if I turn these back on, they're going to begin blending back together. But it's not blending in the way that a regular picture blends. What we've done is take, taken red, green, and blue and bumped them down, so now we have infrared, red, and green. This is called NRG, and the reason is that it's actually not just infrared, it's near infrared. It's just outside of what we can see. So the N, R, and G come from those three channels. Now, one thing is this is a little hazy. Now, this is not, uh, you know, uh, we should be calibrating this to, you know, uh, make sure that the sensors are, uh, you know, are, are equally sensitive, but just so that we can see it better, I'm going to go ahead and um, run auto levels on each one of these. So, that should uh, kind of make everything pop a bit more and allow us to see it uh, more clearly. Let's do that for each channel. And there you go. This is an NRG image. You can see a couple of misalignments here, probably due to spherical lens distortion. But in general, you see quite a bit of difference here where uh, versus the visible image, where uh, the vegetation really shines through. Uh, basically, the redder the color, the, uh, um, the, the, the more um, photosynthesis is occurring because plants have the characteristic that they reflect all that infrared light away but they absorb as much visible light as they can because they use that as food. Uh, one thing we can do to kind of test this out is uh, put these source images back on top, compare it to the visible image which has relatively little information but when you turn on the infrared layer you begin to see all this rich uh, or the, the NRG layer, you can even see all this rich information. Uh, so there it is. That's how you can take two pictures uh, out the window of your airplane and uh, combine them to do an analysis of vegetation. This has been a, a tutorial by uh, Jeff Warren of the Public Laboratory for Open Technology and Science. Uh, you can check it out uh, further at publiclaboratory.org. Thanks very much.